Hello, in this video I will explain how short bubble sort works and draw a comparison between this sorting algorithm and the regular bubble sort algorithm. Short bubble sort is an improvement upon regular bubble sort because with regular bubble sort as we saw in the previous video there are times when it does unnecessary examinations of the list because it's already been sorted but it doesn't know that so let's have a look at the uh, at the code first of all short bubble sort has passes n1 which is the same as regular bubble sort the swaps in the worst case scenario is going to be the same because it will have to run all the way through the list making um, n minus one swaps as it goes <clears throat> it's still naive sorting and its complexity is still o n squared when we look at the code, we can see that there is a while loop and a for loop. The for loop is nested inside the while loop. This is an immediate difference that we can notice from the regular bubble sort, which had a nested for loop. Now, this does pretty much the same as the regular bubble sort, but it notices when a list has already been sorted because if there are no swaps, then the list must have been sorted. So we have a, a variable and we set that to true, and that's swaps. Um, pass equals the length of the list minus one. We do that for the same reason as we did in bubble sort, because once you get to the end of the list, you cannot compare it to something that doesn't exist. Uh, you would end up with an out of bounds error. So once we get into the 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 loops, we see that the while loop has um, a guard on it, which is pass must be greater than zero, so it hasn't finished looking through the list, and swaps must be true. These both both these conditions must be true before it can move on to its next piece of code, which is to set swaps to false. Then we get into the for loop. The for loop steps through the range of pass. And then we get into the if statement, which is about making the swap. And you'll notice that the variable swaps is set to true if a swap has been made. That's how it knows if that stays as false, then the algorithm has completed because there's no more sorting to be done. The pass is, is n minus one. So on the first pass, the length of the list that is going to be checked is going to be n minus one. It's going to go, it's not going to check the last one. The last one will be checked against the one before it, but the last one will not check anything after it because there is nothing after it, it doesn't exist. n minus two, that just means that the list is shortened by 2, n minus 3, it's shortened by 3, etc. This time we're going to use short bubble sort, which is um, a slightly improved algorithm on bubble sort. What happens is we're still going to decrease the list by 1 each pass that we make through the list, but this time we're not going to check the ones that have already been been sorted again and again. What will happen if no swaps have been made, then we can assume that the um, list has been sorted. We can assume that with certainty. Watch. First we start with 3 and 2. 3 is greater than 2, so we swap and move up 1. Then we check 3 against 1. 3 is greater than 1, so we swap and move up 1. Then we check 3 against 45. They're in the correct position, so we leave them alone. 
we check 45 against 27. 45 is greater than 27, so we swap and move up one. We then check 45 against 23. 45 is greater than 23, so we swap and move up one. We check 45 against 18. 45 is greater than 18, so we swap. We move back to the beginning of the list. We check 2 against 1. 2 is greater than 1, so we swap and move up 1. We check 2 against 3. They're in the correct position, so we leave them alone and move up 1. We check 3 against 27. They're in the right position, so we leave them alone and move up 1. We check 27 against 23. 27 is greater than 23, so we swap and move up 1. We then check 27 against 18. 27 is greater than 18, so we swap and we're done because we're decreasing the list by 1 each time. We then move to the beginning again. 1 and 2. They're in the right position, so we leave them alone and move up 1. 2 and 3. They're in the right position, so we leave them alone and move up 1. 3 and 23. They're in the correct position, so we leave them alone and move up 1. We check 23 against 18. 23 is greater than 18, so we swap. Because we're decreasing the list by 1 each time, now we move back to the beginning. We check 1 against 2. They're in the right position, so we leave them alone and move up 1. We check 2 against 3. They're in the right position, so we leave them alone and move up one. We check three against 18. They're in the correct position. That's as far as we go on this last list. We ha haven't, on this last pass through the list, I'm sorry. We haven't made any swaps. So there's no need to check the list any further. Short Bubble Sword is an improvement upon Bubble Sword because it's, it's noticed that the list has already been sorted. This kind of improvement we call optimization. Although Short Bubble Sword is an improvement upon Bubble Sword, it's still very slow. It's fine as long as you have a small data set, but as soon as you have large data sets, it becomes far too slow. If you're not quite sure about any of the coding in the short bubble sort or the bubble sort, please go over my videos on Python programming. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and try out one of my other videos.